limit your exposure to the outside temperatures. Um, stay indoors if you can, um, but if you have to go outside, make sure you are dressed appropriately. Your All your extremities are covered. You're wearing gloves, hats, scarves, um, and just, again, try to limit your time out in the cold. When you live in the northern climate, you're acclimated to days like today, and uh, we've already experienced some folks whose cars didn't start, and uh, we've had um, co-workers pick them up already. Um, it isn't something that we uh, discourage folks from coming to work, but if they choose to stay home, if their car doesn't start, or they feel that uh, the weather is such that it would be um, too much of a risk, we allow them to use annual leave. They could call in and say, I'd like to take a day off, stay indoors, stay warm, and, and wait for um, May when the temperature gets above freezing. So you talked about being acclimated to this area. One of the things I was thinking about is my great-grandfather, who you know, was Swedish. My great-great-grandfather, who I never met, is Swedish. He came to uh, Trap. He came from Sweden to Trap. Um, up at Crane Lake, so he, that would have been with uh, Boys Ford, or you know, I don't know what they even called themselves at that point, but I mean, it would have been with uh, the local people of that area, it would have been Boys Ford or Net Lake, um, and so I think uh, a lot of us, both Native and non-Native, we feel like we have some connection to this, you know, this area, and we understand the cold, and it goes back a few generations. We think that we're acclimated to this area, but it's still, it's still dangerous, right? You're right. Yes, it's still dangerous, um, and again. I would just say, as long as we're dressing appropriately for the weather, I think most of us have lived around the area long enough to know what we need to do um, to keep ourselves safe in this kind of weather. And layers, um, you know, put hand warmers or feet warmers in your gloves and boots. Um, those are just some quick um, precautions you can use. But again, I think it just goes back to limiting your time to the outside exposure. Well, in, as a community, we, uh, for one, we need to take care of each other and, and to know that uh, we're looking out for our neighbors and our, our close friends and family. Uh, no matter how cold it is, people are um, need to be aware of their surroundings and the elements. Uh, within minutes, you know, in, in today's temperatures right now, our, uh, people can have frostbite within minutes. They are... Um, putting themselves at risk if they aren't following some basic safety uh, instructions. Uh, covering their hands, covering exposed skin, um, wearing multiple uh, layers, uh, including jackets, hat and mittens, um, you know, even, even the appropriate clothing of you know, wearing the boots and not just shoes. And, uh, Something like me talking to my daughters. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but you know, the kids, I mean, I'm thinking, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, mm -hmm. but um, I'm thinking about my son who just has to take his gloves off, even, in the, you know, just like, it's like the second he gets in the car or wherever it is, and we have the strings, you know, mm -hmm. but um, it is, it seems like it's like from the car to the convenience store door cold where something could happen, um, you know, for exposed skin, even mm -hmm. in that amount of time. Yep, even, uh, even preparing your 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 loved ones with having them put the snow pants on the their gloves on and, and encouraging them to keep them on it's no different than encouraging them to hold a seat belt uh, and keep that on it's their safety if if something happens and their um, the vehicle goes into the ditch or if uh, it's all on the side of the road in this type of temperature the the weather temp it closes so um, fast that it is um, putting you know the little fingers at risk mm -hmm. how are we doing with our elder neighbors um, and I'll just give an illustration story this summer I don't know you were there we had the uh, elder picnic and if you remember it was a little rainy and it was, it was maybe 60 degrees or something like that and they had one of the best years ever for it and um, some of the advocates were saying it's because our elders are so tough here, you know what I mean? And if they think somebody's, you know, if somebody says you shouldn't go because it's rainy, they might, they'd be, you know, they might just scoff at that because um, they're tough and they've been through stuff that us of younger generations, it's difficult to imagine. 
Certainly, well, I think immediately of my my mother that in even nice weather uh, seems to put on uh, more just to stay warm. It's difficult as it is uh, at that age, uh, but uh, in days like today, it's it's a no-brainer that you simply don't go out. Our thermal regulation just diminishes as we get older, and so for elderly in the home, you're right, they, um, they're they tough and they think they can weather um, this kind of climate, but I think Chuck's right in saying that you should be just not going out um, unless it's an absolute emergency. Um, as for medical appointments, if there's just routine medical care, um, I think they should be rescheduled and unless you're seriously ill, um, I think just staying at home is the best idea for elderly. And um, I think family members and neighbors, as Nate mentioned, should be checking on these people at home to um, make sure that their heat is working in the home and they have food and water and um, basic necessities. Um, because like you said, if they're tough and prideful, they may not um, let people know what's going on. So just checking on people and seeing how they're doing um, is great.